I'm sure you guys have uh, busy Fridays uh, ahead of you guys. Um, Anthony, I'll, I'll start with you. How did you end up playing professional basketball where you're at right now? Uh, start off with being consistent. Um, I was playing ball at school and college uh, at William Penn University. Decided not to go to go back to school and uh, dropped out during school for my English class. And it's in the wind and traveled to Florida where I had a little camp called Gamble, Gamble Sports Management. And um, I took took a took a chance on on uh, trying to play basketball overseas and finally got an overseas contract in Florida. And then that's how I got here. But I had to be real consistent on uh, playing basketball for us, going to camps and investing myself and just trying to take a risk, which I'm very, I'm very a uh, riskful, riskful, riskful kid. So I took a lot of risk and I bet on myself. Like my my friend Fred, which he's in the NBA right now, betting on myself, and I'm here now actually. And so you, you leave Florida. How many different professional leagues have you been a part of? Uh, it's my eighth year playing professional basketball right now. So I've been all over Mexico, Italy, Spain, Canada, stuff like that. So I actually, I've been in a couple leagues in, uh, in the States as well, two for his ABA leagues and stuff like that too. So. Gotcha. And, and throughout all the stops, do you have a personal favorite stop or anything like that? Uh, my favorite stop would have to be probably Spain because it was like um, that's actually one of my favorite countries I want to want to go to, and I actually went to it, and the stuff I seen on TV was actually reality. So I actually like the basketball uh, feel of it, uh, the atmosphere, and then uh, outside of that, you know, they real big on soccer too. So they soccer games be be packed, you know, and then. They have a little English and they speak Spanish too, so it's a little both of of, of of the language too as well. So I won't, I wasn't feel left out, you know. Yeah. Spanish, good, yes, no, somewhere in between. Yeah, I speak, I speak good enough language to uh, Spanish to um to get around and stuff like that. I have like a ten minute conversation to call people, but I can, I can speak good enough to survive where I'm at or get to where I need to go. Gotcha. And so, how did you end up in El Salvador? Uh, by um, being consistent for a scoring, I was one of the top scorers. Actually, every year, what it, what it, what what's happening is when you play overseas basketball, they keep your stats, and you have to be consistent. So, I'm known for scoring and and, and um, being a good point guard, just like in high school. I was known for being. Uh, Offensive threat or three uh, three point specialist with Fred at, at Auburn High School. So uh, during that time, I had to be consistent with my scoring. So I was averaging like twenty points a game, like five assists a game, just like that. And then what they what happens is your your stats being transferred to different countries, and other scouts and teams look at you. So it's basically it's a job. Put it like that. It's my resume. Hey, real quick, Mike. Actually, how he got overseas, he's been consistent off and on playing ball, I should say. Uh, there's a team here in Rockford called Rockford Warriors. Okay, they're a professional basketball player. A professional basketball team, non-profit organization, a new team in the league, a new franchise, and he played on that team, which is a team I coach. Uh, my, my mentor, Lance Pitts is also over champion sports. He uh, saw something in Anthony, and uh, pretty much uh, as the games we've been playing, you know, Anthony's been keeping game film, making game film, what have you. He sent his game film to uh, El Salvador and some other places as well. And El Salvador liked what they seen. He went over there once and played in a tournament and brought back a trophy for Team USA. Then two months later, they called Lance, which is quote unquote Anthony's agent, and uh, they said, "Hey, I like this kid. I want to see him. Well, I want to play." So they gave him a contract. So that's how he ended up in El Salvador. Gotcha, gotcha. And, and the way they do basketball down there, are you guys coming up on like a summer season? Did you guys just wrap up winter season? How do how do things sort of work down there? Pretty much overseas basketball is like a year round thing. So like 
it's different countries. It's like it's like a hundred and some odd countries, you know. And El Salvador is a Latin American country, so it's like one of the shortest seasons of all basketball. So like when I, when I'm in uh El Salvador or Mexico, or whatever, you you be playing in in the Latin America country for like two months. So I'm pretty much done wrapping up my season here. But after this season, I got an agent. I got other people to, to help me out to find a different team, like my, my dad, my agent, or other scouts as well. Or I got, I depend on my game film, which I have a whole YouTube channel of all my games that I played when I first played professional basketball eight years ago. So I pretty much got a whole portfolio of what I've been doing, my stats, my stats been all over all over the world. Um, it's pretty much like that. So, pretty much basketball is a job, but it's not a job for me. But it's a job. You know, I've had fun with it, but it's a job too. Cause every job, every team wants to know my my previous history. So that's how I come come upon that. Do you see Do you see yourself staying in El Salvador for another season, or are you want to move to? Somewhere else, somewhere in the near future. Uh, good question. That's a good question, Dub. I don't know. I, I actually, um, my, I actually want to play in a Euro League, or I entered my name in a draft like twice already. I have two NBA G League teams. It was interesting to me like a couple years back. So my ending place wanted to be in Europe, top league Europe, somewhere like that. If I'm not making the NBA or G League, I want to be in Europe, in Spain. And just. Right. Can you ask, can you, uh, ask that question again? I was interrupted while well, somebody was. Oh, no, you're totally fine. I mean, uh, just to repeat it, was there ever a time where you know, you're 16, 17 years old and playing basketball on offer that basketball was going to take you on a literal globe trotting journey to play all over the place? And uh, to be honest with you, I always thought I was going to be playing basketball because how I grew up. I started playing basketball when I was four years old, thanks to my dad. Um, we went to McDonald's and had, you know, I had to do the Happy Meals and all that. My Happy Meal was a basketball. So um, I ain't never put the basketball down since, but I knew I was going to be become something with basketball because I was always in the gym. It was times where I was I didn't make a lot of friends or go to a lot of outings or parties like that because I was always in the gym, 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 gym. Like, I... I was so addicted to gym, like, I ain't want to do nothing else. So I knew I was very confident in my craft that I was going to at least play basketball at lowest or highest level or whatever, but I was going to play pro somewhere. And just what is it like, you know, at least with March Madness, you know, coming through, you're seeing more and more names from Rockford, whether they be players or women's basketball players it seems like the number just keeps rising for the amount of talent that comes yeah. out of this area what do you make of just the current state of basketball in the Rockford area even though you're uh, on an almost the complete other side of the continent right now yeah I think um we holding it down for us um when me and Fred and JD and um the class of 2011 2010 we we made a mark and I think that since then there's been a lot of young players following in our footsteps for basketball like uh, Malachi Johnson that goes to Gilford High School I, try, I'm, I call my little brother I've been knowing him since man yay high um, Amir Amir Danforth whatever you know from Auburn High School like it's a lot of good players from the area that that's been slept on you know I think rockford has been slept on for basketball and I've been I've been like that too like I feel like we have a lot to offer for basketball, but everybody oversees us and go to Chicago and all the schools down south. But no, nah, not no more. I guess I guess people coming down to to Rockford to check out basketball a little more. Like this year, basketball has been competitive for its high school, and I haven't been there to see the games, but I've been watching it on like online, and seeing the, the news reports and stuff like that. And this year been the best basketball that's been played. I, I get, I see. A lot of schools, a lot of D1 schools coming to grasp Rockford kids now, which they know we have talent. So, you know, I might as well come down there and check us out. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. And uh, I'm trying to think of uh, 
uh, just a few more questions here, I guess. You know, when when your playing days do eventually come to an end, like it happens for, for everybody, what do you see yourself doing beyond basketball? Um, I have a saying that um, everybody goes, well, something goes, uh, Tom Brady and out or LeBron James. Like, like LeBron, LeBron James, James is like, he's still playing basketball. He's about to be 40 something. Like, so I'm planning on retiring in good shape. 243. I got a good 10, 12 more years of good basketball. After that, I want to um, be a scout or agent so I can um, scout kids that's less fortunate that they don't have enough money to to play basketball because you have to invest in yourself to play basketball. Basketball not cheap. Like, my OG and my dad, they done spent a lot of money on me just to cause just to go to camps because it do cost to go to basketball camps trust me there's nothing handed out to you there's no red carpet handed out to you nothing like that so you got to spend some money to go to the camps to get your name out um and actually um yeah i want to be a big time scout so i we actually got something going on called strickland agency right now but we're not certified but for the from the connects that we have for my connects that i've been playing with the past teams like mexico and all that and my dad, he has connects. We try to help people out right now for us getting people probably in school or overseas. Like my dad sent two people overseas already, which is me and somebody else. Then I already sent somebody overseas myself. So I want to scout and be an agent because I didn't, I didn't see a lot of stuff. And I see a lot of mistakes and I'm covering mistakes right now. So, yeah. Kind of touching on uh, earlier, you said you're not the first person I've, I've definitely heard say this about you know Rockford being overlooked as a recruiting area for high school basketball players, and mentioning that you know to be able to even just get noticed, the amount of resources, time, money, whatever it may be, events that you need to be able to get eyes on you. Do you feel like that it's that's the biggest thing Rockford struggles with? It's not only just being overlooked because Chicago's right there, but also just lack of resources for kids to be able to go play in these big-time tournaments or play on these big-time teams or travel with these Right. Um, I feel like we always been overlooked. I don't know what reason why we was overlooked, but now we are making noise for basketball state line. Girls, boys, you know, so... I commend that, and I recommend a lot of schools to come check us out, too, as well, because it don't matter what school you go to, what college you go to, you can go pro from playing basketball at a decent school. Like, I went to a JUCO school, I went to Auburn High School, and I, look how I turned out. Came from Rockford. So, it don't matter what state you're from or what city you're from. It's, as long as you make, if you make a noise, somebody gonna hear, somebody gonna hear from you. Feel like that. It's always somebody watching. You never know who's watching. There ain't gonna be no scout that says, "Oh, I'm a Louisville scout and stands." No, like, you never know who's watching though. For for so, if you make a noise, and take care of your business, and we have support here in Rockford. That's what that's what it's all about. Support. And we, as long as you got support, sky's the limit in Rockford. We come together like other cities. We should be fine. Gotcha. I think that, that's a pretty good way to add it. Just a, a, one or two more questions, just sort of uh, for information. You mentioned you got a, a YouTube channel. What would that be able to pull highlights from that to be able to use for the story by chance? Yeah, uh, it's called. Lab, um, or you just type in Anthony Strickland basketball, and you, you can see me, my picture of me, uh, in El Salvador, sticking defense on somebody. But I have like over 70 videos of me playing professional basketball from like my rookie season. So I'm real big on content. And then, you know, once the season over, a scout or agent will always ask you, hey, um, where you from? And you got any, you got any, uh, you got any game film? You got an agent? If you don't know game film or no resume, then it's basically useless, you know what I'm saying? Because that's your job. It's like a regular job. You have a resume, right? From your previous job. So I'm real big on that. I got a lot of game film. So if you want to go on YouTube and check me out, you just type in my last, first and last name and type in basketball, you should see me right there. Or you can just type in Strict Lab, which is my, which is our academy we have. Me and my dad, we have an academy to train kids called Strict Lab. So, you can guys, you guys can go to that too. And, uh, type that in on YouTube as well. Gotcha. And uh, what was the other question I had? Uh, oh, so are you? Uh, 
Are you currently signed to a team? I know you said you had you guys just kind of wrapped up the yeah. season, or you have maybe a few games left. Are you currently a free agent? Or are you signed with the team right now? What's your what's your status with that? Um, I have a week left for the season. Um, in El Salvador, it's called the LNB. I play for Santana Basketball Club in uh, Santana, Santana. After that, I will be a free agent. After that. Resigned though, but it's a good opportunity right. though for me for my first year in uh, El Salvador. But uh, it's very bittersweet opportunity. But I use this opportunity to to level up and go to another country because I am trying to fill my passport up too as well. So it all depends on what the team's offering and, and you know go from there. But other than that, um, I just use this as a footstool to, to level up and go to another country because I believe I can play at the highest level, which I have been playing with the top league and come from the bottom going, coming up right, right now. I, I made a big, big, big step in overseas basketball, especially this year. So I think I made a good name for myself this year too as well. So I'll be coming Sorry, go ahead. No, you good. Um, in the meantime, I will be coming back to play for Rafa Words with my dad and Coach Lance Pitts, so I will not have no gap in my resume as well. So I'll be playing basketball year round. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, you mentioned filling up the passport. Canada, is Spain, Italy, El Salvador. Am I missing any other countries? Um, this is about that's about it. And then you got Canada. You got you got to have a little passport for Canada because you got to cross that border and stuff like that. But yeah, pretty much that's it. Gotcha. All right. Uh, do you guys have anything else that you want to add before I let uh, both of you go here? Uh, I just want to tell you to, man, put, put us out there. Like, as they would say, put us on the map. <laughs> Mike, we're non nonprofit. And getting the quality of guys, uh, I'm not putting them down, but you know, you got recreation ball players and you got skilled, uh, by organized basketball players. And you can find some of the best players probably in the gym, sure enough. But if you don't have the mindset to be coachable, go to the next level from a professional perspective, not only be a professional on court, a professional off court, doing stuff out of the community when that goes up. I am in tune a little bit with Mayor Tom McNair. Him and I, we talk a couple times on the phone and uh, email each other. Pretty much just put it together. But just kind of put our name out there. You know, there was another team that started, trying to get started, it was called the Red, Red, Red Blacks or something like that. Rocker Red Blacks, but they uh, decided not to get the team. But but us being our third year, uh, first year we made it to a championship. We didn't get a chance to play because of some technicalities. The second year we made it to the Elite Eight. I made Coach of the Year. So we got a combine coming up in uh, June or July, and uh, just try to revamp that and get some more guys on the team. But just just put our name out, put Rocker Warriors out there, and let everybody, everybody know because you know we haven't had basketball here since Rocker Lightning. And Anthony used to get ball boys in them years ago when I first moved here. <laughs> oh, and I got a, and I got a service and moved here. And um, yeah, just to bring that up and entertainment for the city. We got ice hockey. We got monster trucks. Why not bring basketball? So pretty much that's what we're trying to do. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yeah, th thank you guys so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. I'm not sure exactly when this story will run. I know we got. Uh, just a lot coming up in the next couple of weeks with just the spring sports all have their playoffs starting up pretty soon here. So, uh, but I will be sure to let you both know when we do run the story. Uh, we might have a handful of weeks, but I, I know we will get to it because I really enjoyed this interview. I really enjoyed talking uh, to both of you and things like that. So, enjoy both of your Fridays. Thank you guys so much for sitting down with me. And, uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Uh, Recording. Don't know